Okay, great. Uh, hi, my name is Scott Shuby. I work for Intel, and I'm also the project chair of a group called industry group called the CWDM8 MSA group. And so I'm going to just talk a little bit about um, the CWDM8 MSA and what it's trying to do. It's a it's a 400 gig optical MSA, and I'll be the first to say there's a lot of different flavors of optics. Uh, there's a lot of different customer requirements. There's ones that run on multi-mode fiber, single-mode fiber, different rates. This is one of them, um, and uh, you know I'll talk a little bit about why we think it's good for uh, particular applications. Okay. So the, the CWM8 MSA is an industry group. It has the companies down there that's shown at the bottom. Um, some component vendors, some module vendors, uh, some of which I see here, some system vendors, um, all getting together to define interoperability uh, specifications for 400 gigabit per second optics. Um, you know, and again, common MSA specs or you know, multi-source agreement specs are ensure interoperability, just like an IEEE spec would or, or whatever, so that you know that if you buy an optic that's compliant to the CWM8 MSA that uh, complies to those specs, it'll talk to another module that, that implements the CWM8 MSA specs. And so the, goal, the overall goal is to help accelerate adoption of 400 gig uh, networking equipment. I saw, you know, just as an example, I saw EdgeCore announced a 400 gig switch at the show, at the OCP show, but this applies to any type of 400 gig networking equipment, uh, make, whether, it's, uh, whether it's OCP networking equipment um, um, from, from any of the companies here or, or, or some proprietary um, 400 gig uh, networking equipment. Okay. Um, so looking at what the module looks like, again, in, in, in any optical module, you have um, a, an electrical interface on one side and an optical interface on the other side. So um, in the case of CWM8, you have an electrical interface that's an IEEE standard 8 by 50 gig PAM4 interface, um, as defined by the IEEE. On the optical side, you have an uh, interface that the CWM8 MSA defines, which is 8 by 50 gig NRZ. And so just to kind of clarify how these things match up, the electrical interface of a module will be defined by the IEEE in this case. Um, the module form factor and the, um, you know, uh, the management interface will be defined by typically a module MSA, like whether it's QSFPDD or OSFP or Kobo. And the optical interface here would be defined by, um, for CWM8, the CWM8 MSA group, the group of companies that you saw there. And those specs are available, publicly available, and not on the CWM8 MSA website. Okay, so just to talk a little bit about why we would do CWM8 because there's there's different approaches for for solving the same problem uh, that, that one could think of. So first of all, CWM8 is targeted at uh, two kilometer and ten kilometer duplex single mode fiber links. So one one transmit fiber, one receive fiber, and covering reaches of two kilometers and ten kilometers. And um, so some of the benefits again is that um, although the the MSA doesn't define the electrical interface, um, it's it's perfectly compliant or compatible with an IEEE standard uh, electrical interface that would go back to any, any piece of networking equipment that implements that, which we expect to be most of them. Um, on the optical side, and we'll talk about this in a, in a little bit more detail in a couple of slides, um, it has an 8 by 50 gig NRZ optical interface. Um, the CWM uh, part means a coarse, WD, uh, a coarse WDM for, for fully uncooled operation, so you don't need a tech cooler inside the module. Um, and the NRZ part gives you the best link performance on single mode fiber. Um, and again, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but the idea behind CWM8 is that this is the approach that gives you the highest link margin, which, which we believe gives the, you know, again, the highest yield, which ultimately gives the lowest cost and the maximum scalability. And so that's, that's why it's a good solution for 400 gig at volume uh, for customers that need that in the, in the very near term. Um, it'll, it'll fit into all of the industry standard uh, form factors like QSPDD and OSFP. Um, it's been demonstrated at both 2 kilometer and 10 kilometer, and we believe, at least as of right now, that it's the industry's only uh, data center targeted 10 kilometer optical interface so for customers that need 10 kilometer reach. And the technical approach, uh, we, we always get asked, well, what comes next? Um, and, and we believe that this approach lays the groundwork for future 800 gig and beyond. Okay, so talking a little bit about this uh, this link budget, which we believe is is um, is one of the key features of the CWM8 MSA. Uh, when you look at PAM4 versus NRZ, so PAM4 is a uh, you know, modulation format that's now uh, getting in incorporated into a lot of standards. Um, PAM4 is well suited to channels where you have low bandwidth because you're basically sending two two symbols per 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 bit period, um, and um, and so so that would 
for instance, be electrical uh, backplane and, and DAC links, where you have a high signal to noise ratio relative to an optical channel at least, um, but very, very very low bandwidth. So you can see here on the right, you've got an, an electrical channel, the, the Kadawi 8 or the 400 g uh, 8 interface where you have you know, 20 dB loss, um, uh, 20 dB loss at, at, at the, the Nyquist frequency. And so then you're, then you're talking about something where you've really got high frequency dependent loss. You really don't want to operate at any higher bit rate than you have to, any baud rate than you have to. An optical channel, uh, but in contrast, single mode fiber basically doesn't have any bandwidth limitation you know, for the purposes of the, the bit rates that we're working at uh, and the distances that we're talking about. So really you're limited by your optical component bandwidth. So if, you, if your optical components have a high enough bandwidth, so Here's just a, just a nominal example. It depends on implementation. You might have something that has you know, 6 dB loss at, uh, you know, at, 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 at the actual bit rate. And so you're really, really able to, able to operate uh, at a higher bit rate, but you, don't, uh, you have higher noise on an optical channel typically because you have laser noise and other, and other, other sources. And so you really don't want to take that SNR hit. And so this shows that, that pictorially an NRZ high has that big wide eye opening, and PAM4, just, just by the way it's, it's defined, we forget about implementation penalties, has one third of the eye opening. Okay. And so if you, look at, um, if you look at comparisons between different 400 gig duplex optical, uh, single mode uh, optical links, you can kind of add up penalties, right? So all of these will vary a, a little bit uh, by your implementation, how well you do it, what type of technology you use. But more, more or less, the, you know, the, we believe the trends are, are, are accurate. So if you look at, um, if you're operating at a higher bit rate, you, um, you take a penalty for operating at a higher bit rate. So on your transmit side, it might be eye quality. On your receive side, it might be receive noise bandwidth. Um, you have your MUX DMUX loss, which is common across all of these. Um, and then you have the, the, the actual link penalties, which are defined in there. So the big hitters for the PAM4, e either PAM4, uh, and I, I'm showing three, three, three options here. One is an IEEE standard called FR8, uh, which does 8 by 50 gig PAM4. Uh, the middle one is CWM8, which does 8 by 50 gig NRZ. And the one on the right is, is FR4, which is another MSA standard also targeted at 2 kilometers, which runs at four channels of 100 gigabit per second. Um, so the big hitters there are you take a penalty for PAM4 modulation. Again, that you, have, you have a third of the eye opening just by the nature of it. And um, some type of implementation penalty, which we estimate at about 1.5 dB. Again, that will vary by implementation. But uh, you know, these are things like linearity penalty, sensitivity to ISI, greater sensitivity to crosstalk, and things like that. Um, Xilinx had a good design con paper um, uh, last year, about last year on this topic. And so when you add it all up, you know, FR8, you've got penalty for PAM4 and PAM4 implementation, but you're running at a lower baud rate, so it, it, it cancels that out somewhat. But still you're talking about a 4 dB um, a hit versus a CWM8, which takes a higher baud rate penalty, but doesn't take the PAM4 penalties. And then when you're talking about FR4, which runs at 100 gig per lane, you're taking all the penalties. The penalties from operating at a higher baud rate, plus the penalties for PAM4. And so that's not to say that any of these are impossible to implement, but, but you're, you're going to take a penalty. And that penalty has to be either in the form of your transmitter has to put out more output power, or your receiver has to be more sensitive, or both. And so that's the way the standards are written. And you can see that pictorially. So here, here again is an actual NRZI at, 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 at 50 gig, gigabod, and a PAM4I at 50 gigabod. And so you can see just the eye is just more closed. And so, uh, so again, you know, the idea behind CWM8 fundamentally is that good link margin slash lower link penalties are going to give you higher yield, lower cost, and maximum scalability, fastest time to volume. Okay. Um, so looking at it another way, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you know, if you look at past speed transitions, so you look at when, you, when, when the industry has gone for single mode optics from 1 gig to 10 gig to 40 gig to 100 gig, um, Every, every time that the speed has gone up, uh, the, the link budget has either remained the same or been relaxed somewhat, right? So either, either by, uh, uh, yeah, then that's that middle row there, link budget, which, is, which I'm simplifying here as TX output power minus receive sensitivity. So you can see here that the, the, the budget always stays about the same. The modulation format in the past hasn't changed. And still, it's taken quite a while to get optics to market, kind of along the lines of what, what Heidi was saying. You know, one gig was three years, and, and defining that here as the time it took the industry from the time the standard was released to the time the industry as, an, as a whole shipped a million units. So it took three years for one gig, uh, six years for 10 gig, 
40 gig was the same, same baud rate, so it didn't take us quite as long. And then 100 gig took another six years as we went to, from 10 gig to 25 gig. So as we look forward, you, you, there's no way to say how it's going to play out. But the idea behind CWM8 is to continue along that same historical trend and say, we're going to keep the link budget roughly the same, actually a little bit less. Um, we're not going to change the modulation format. We're going to up the speed, which is hard to do. And we'll see how long it takes to get the market. Um, for FR4 and FR8, you're talking about uh, maybe tripling the link budget. Um, you can see there in the red. You're changing the modulation format, and um, you know, we, we think that that's going to take longer to get to scale. So. And then so looking beyond, beyond 400 gig, again, there's different ways to get to beyond 400 gig, and nobody, uh, or at least if somebody knows what's beyond 400 gig uh, for sure, then uh, I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards. Um, <laughs> I'd love to know it. But, um, but we've had some, some people talk about 800 gig or 2 by 400 gig as a potential next step beyond 400 gig for people that are deploying 400 gig now. Um, what time frame that is is another unknown. But so, so you know, potentially if you're trying to get to, to 800 gig, you could go, um, again, we have eight channels by 50 gig. You add PAM4, um, and you get to 800 gig, 8 by 100 gig. And the idea is wait another few years until 100 gig PAM4 technology is you know, quite mature, and then you implement it. OK, and so just uh, last, I'll just show you a couple of um, you know, products and technology. So these are some things that, that companies in the CWMA are, are doing. So this is a company called Credo that makes ICs. So they have an IC that is actually that block that was in the, the uh, CWM8 module. It takes in 8 by 50 gig PAM4 and puts out 8 by 50 gig NRZ. And so this is just showing their 50 gigabot I and a little eval board here and some of the features. So that's one. And that, and that I believe, is, uh, is, is, in, is in production in, uh, later this year. Um, uh, another example is uh, from AOI. So AOI is uh, showing here their direct mo directly modulated laser and some results there. And so you can see at, uh, some results at 1310 nanometers uh, transmitting uh, with pretty good results over 10 kilometer, the eye there. And you know, it's expected that the, the technology could work uh, with CWM8 applications for, for shorter reach. And then, um, and then uh, Intel uh, uh, has, a, uh, has a module actually, actually showing at, uh, I think, the Intel booth, or maybe, it, maybe it'll be gone by the time we're, we're out of this talk. But you can see here um, uh, the, the optical eye. This is, this is actually a QSFPDD module. You can see the eight channels on the optical spectrum, the high speed 50 gig NRZ eye, and the, and the 50 gig PAM eye on the electrical side. So join us. Um, anyone that's interested in finding out more about the CWM8 MSA or joining the MSA, um, you know, the, the standards are, the specifications are publicly available um, on the site. You know, feel free to talk to any of the member companies about, uh, you know, their offerings. And, you know, the MSA is taking on new member companies. So if you had any interest, just, just shoot me an email. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Wonder good. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on.